and welcome to another um, interview of Exoconscious Humans, where we are developing a new perspective of what it means to be human today. Um, humans that are in contact, communication, and co-creating with extraterrestrials, multidimensionals, and spiritual beings. And today we have, have Cynthia Kenyes, who, who is also in our Exoconscious Coaching Group. And we welcome her to talk about her contact and the exciting co-creative work that she's doing. She's from Sonoran, Mexico, so the northern part of Mexico. She does very innovative work with teachers and school systems and children in education to bring them to an awareness of who they are, their self-identity and their spirituality, which I'm going to have her tell you more about that. Cynthia and I met, uh, I looked at my notes a year ago. It's only a year ago. One year? Uh, one year ago. Wow. It seems like it's forever. <laughs> so, so Cynthia came from Mexico and she came up to um, Phoenix and, and we, we met and I learned all about um, her work and her interests. And so uh, Cynthia, tell us a little bit about like how you found exoconsciousness and coaching and how we came to meet each other and how that evolved for you. Yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's, I'm, I'm nervous. I don't know my English is going to work for you. I hope I, I can do this. <laughs> Thank you. I remember I looked at you because I, I really needed to have some answers on this mm, interactions I've been having since, since I think it was, um, 2017, 18, I don't remember. And uh, so I saw a documentary with Caroline Corey, where you were participating. And I remember I was looking like I, I really needed, I really wanted to, to know more. So I just look, find out who was near here. And I, and then suddenly it was, you appeared, you were in Arizona. So Arizona is close to my city. And so I just put an appointment with you. And I remember you told me, like, we can do it um, online. And I said, no, I don't want anything online anymore. I just want to meet you. And, yeah, you were very kind. And you, we meet each other. And I remember for me, it was like a big deal. Like, I couldn't understand the things were happening to me. And you were so nice, so calm, like, just hearing me like, oh, yeah, that happens all the time. Of course, it's natural. So it was like, wow, I just found out somebody in, in a sort of a community that had this, this thing coming, going and understanding and integrating. So I just felt a lot more supported and more understanding in that way. So it, it, it's incredible. It's just been a year because for me, it seems like I don't know. It feels like forever. <laughs> it's been wonderful. And then Cynthia joined our Exoconscious Coaching Group. And um, later on, I want to talk about how that how that changed and the kind of information that being with other people who are contactees and have had these anomalous um, experiences of contact has has um, influenced you. But let's let's start talking about your contact because. When you came to see me, you spoke of um, a very vivid, physically vivid contact experience that yes. you had had. And you you thought that you had it around age 33, which is a very metaphysical number, <laughs> mm -hmm. 33. And um, would you share with everyone um, what happened to you and what how that awakened you? I I remember one night I, I was I was asleep. I was just in the middle of the night. And suddenly there was like a big, big, big um energy felt like an orgasm that came in in through my body. It just woke me up in a way that I just 
experience um, love and the connection with everything at a time. And I felt like my whole body back with that energy. And I felt so good. I felt so loved, so connected, so in me, in myself, recognizing. But then after that, I was like, well, what was it? Like, it was, it was so big, I couldn't understand exactly what happened. And after that, I just started like my, my foot mm, changes. Like I couldn't eat meat anymore. And I felt so alive and I felt joy and I felt love and I fell in love with everything as a nature. And, and I remember like I feeling a lot of things in, 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 periods of time very short periods of time and so I was taking some classes we uh, some workshops of, of, of healing and I asked my teacher like you know in the middle like of the night I have this um this happened to me and he said he just sort of me and said oh yeah you were having interactions with ETs he told it was it was like sort of the first time I had that concept in myself, although it felt a lot of familiar with me because I used to love um, this uh, cartoon fellow um, Marvin, and and I used to love to see the sky and I feel this connection. I was very curious about and in, in interdimensional beings, and but I didn't. I have no idea at the time. Like I was. I was not expecting to, not for nothing. So, and I was like, wow, how could that be possible? But he just told me that, that, that everything he told me. So I sort of started like um, questioning myself what happened and, and finding myself feeling so different. And that's when I met you, like when I went to see you and you just told me, oh yeah, that was the Kundalini activation. I still have not uh, the whole idea of that what that means, but I know it's it's a lot different. Like my even my physical configuration energy is a lot different since that since that night, and I've been integrating more, and I've been uh, understanding and and enjoying in a way this different configuration or this. Feeling. Did you pursue your study of healing? Did you become a healer? Yes, yes, I, I, I do. I do healing, and I, I used to do a lot of healers before I got that, and after that too. But it's been like almost for maybe two years when we started with the school project that I just focus more on the educational programs and the, and the communities that I just sort of uh, stay, stand by the, the healing in a way because I'm always like, I, I love to help and to be in service. And I'm always talking about this, like with everybody around me. So, but not an official, like I don't attend officially now. I remember when you came to see me, you you spoke about having dreams of um, vaccinations and COVID. And do you remember oh, that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a lot of dreams. Like I dream my dreams, uh, my astral realm. Like I started to to go more deep in my astral realm, and I've been having this amazing interactions and this amazing experiences where I can feel my body in the astral realm and when I can sort of navigate through time and space in a way. Uh, it just been maybe a, one, two, two times that I, I just sort of just feel it and I'm awake. I'm sort of awake, but not in my body, just in the field, in the astral field. So, but it's, it's been part of it. Like it's been part of this process of, of information that I've been integrating from there. And could you share with um, 
people what tools you use to become aware of your astral body? <laughs> I try so many things. Like I, I usually well. I, first of all, like I don't use to eat anything before I go to bed. I just have my big glass of water beside my bed, and and I just started to feel how my body sort of dissipates when I'm when I just when I just about to sleep. I start feeling my energetic body in in sort of a way of sand if I was sand and and I was I'm just dissipating and and in the middle I have I why well, I journal so I have my journal always in, in in the side of my bed and I and I try to write whatever comes into you in the middle of the night or the next morning and I intend, like, I, I just intend myself to understand, to process information it, that it's helpful for me in the process I'm living in the day. And because, maybe because I, I'm, I'm an artist, I, I do theater. So I, I sort of make this language for me where, where images and colors and different scenarios or characters just come and talk, talk to me and give this information. So I sort of make the, what I do when I do a play, where I, when I create, when I'm creating a play, just sort of, of get the context, the analysis of the characters and make the whole scenario and the timing and, and just read what the information is given me and, and, and what it means to my, myself, what, what different person is in the dream that is telling me sort of an information that 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 is a part of me that I'm just seeing through that character because I put it in there. I, I sort of think dreams are our own creative scenario. Like we are the artist of whatever we are creating in there. We're the architect. We are the director we are the actors we are the the everything there so I just see myself through every any character and and try to get the best of the information I mean this sounds maybe itchy but it's not and not every time I just get it but but that's the way I I download that information from the astral room that's a beautiful description because sometimes I think the most difficult part of dreams is when we want to limit them and say, oh, no, we're just the good people in the dreams. We're not these other characters. And the way you're describing it gives access to a lot more inner knowledge by seeing ourselves as everyone. Yes. Yes. Well, it, it works for me, at least. <laughs> I've been like it's been a process, and and that's the way like I I sort of integrate the information, and it's been it works like, and I have some experience, and sometimes, of, for example, where I can translate translate things from the astral to the physical realm in sort of a way. Uh, for example, the the one last I remember, I, I was I was dreaming I was I was in my car and I dream this a lot like I'm in my car I'm driving but there's in the middle of the night and there's there's no light that suddenly like the the lights of my car just start like to to go off and I when I jumped when I just started to panic myself I just breathe and I say okay I can because I love to when I go into my house I don't turn on the light all, like right away. I just like being in the dark and active, like my my third eye, my psychic. Mm -hmm. And so I I do that in the in the car. I was doing that in the car when the lights just shut down, and I was like, okay, I can see, I can see energy, I can see it, and I, I and I can drive intuitive, intuitively drive. And and I remember I was driving and, and I got to a place I was getting and suddenly there was a lot of fog. There was a lot of fog where I was getting and I woke up. 
and I was flying that day and and in the plane they told us that the plane was delayed because of fog because they were having fog so it was interesting and another time I I dreamed with toothbrush like uh, there was toothbrush in in the in the in the bathroom and and I remember because my kid asked me mom do you have a toothbrush so I can clean my shoes and I I remember suddenly remember I just drum, dreamt that like the night before and I said well just check if there's a toothbrush in the in the bathroom in the window and there was not but that same day my husband was asking me to help him look for some for some things he was I remember what we were looking for but I remember I found a toothbrush in the bottom of the table where where of a desk where it was what was a toothbrush doing there so I sort of started like to see what was that meaning and I found out I needed to clean some of my fifth chakra and we sort of my kid and my husband expressing things so it's it's how do I create this language to understand myself in a in, in higher levels of consciousness too can, can we go back and talk about your childhood because you had such a rich childhood especially with your grandmother and uh, your Catholicism and in your in your in your town and in your community could you re- relate to us how how this applies to who you become today how you've integrated that I have a, a childhood in very contact with nature like uh, my mom had uh, her, my grandmother and, and my grandfather lived in a very, very small town. And and we used to go there like every weekend. And there was no TV, there was no phone, like there was nothing there. We would just run into the river, into the mountains, into the trees and playing the bicycles. And, and I, I had a lot of contact with nature. And there was my grandmother from from my dad that he lived in a ranch in the middle of nothing so when we go there i remember we slept outside like we just set the beds outside and we just there because there was no light there we had like uh my my grandmother had some sort of um i don't know how you call it in english but it we called it a plant electrical plant here but that provides with gasoline it just makes like light. a generator yeah like a generator for light with of gasoline i remember it was gasoline so when the it was when just the sound goes go, went down it was like okay we'll we're turning off the lights so you better go to bed and i remember we we just go to bed they turn off the lights and we can see this whole beautiful with the stars and shooting everything was like so natural we had we were cow we had cows we we just went and took milk from the cow we made some coffee I remember I enjoy so much the coffee when I mm-hmm. when I first taste um cappuccino when they get it it would it, it tastes just what, like the cup of coffee when I went to the cow and just get the mail from there. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> and so I think that's a lot of, 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 that has a lot to be with me, with myself, like connecting with this part, like recognizing the whole, uh, this contact with nature I have, this opportunity. My, my grandmother from my mom, she was a very religious uh, woman. She was in the Catholic Church. She was like part of the Catholic Church, and she was always teaching us. Like we used to pray for rain. We used to pray like for for not to rain too. We used to offer some flowers to these uh, figures, and and I have to say now that I I don't consider I I don't like anymore the Catholic. I'm not a religion like a, a but but I sort of uh, integrate that knowledge my ma, my grandma gave me in, in, in that way because I know 
in sort of a way she was a very sensitive person too when so I I appreciate that from her too. I I respect how she she um channeled her sensitivity through Catholicism into actually manifesting things like rain and and it worked. I remember it worked. Like we went then five o'clock in the morning and we just started praying and and 10 o'clock in the morning it was raining and and I can as a child like I know now well the intention the community the collective and the confidence we were putting into that prayers make the difference in that way so uh, there's I think there's a big thing a big deal in that for me to be trusting the energy field and uh, and, and and trusting and and recognizing the the whole or the all that is, I don't know, in a way. When did you first become aware that you could read frequencies? Read frequencies? Yeah. Well, maybe right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. I, I remember I loved theater when I started to theater, like the first time. I remember I, I it's my favorite play of all. Waiting for Godot from Samuel Beckett. I, I played as the tree. I was a tree all the time. And I remember it was, it was so amazing to just feel the, the audience, um, like the audience perspective and this and how, how they were, we were just interacting and, and, and sharing energy how, how it comes and goes and I think theater was was a great tool for me because it just helped me to ha- channel all the energy and all the intense emotions I was feeling in through a story that had a meaning a purpose and that was sharing a message with people so so that was that was a very very healing tool for me in in the beginning that I I had no idea I just enjoyed it, but while I w- I deep in myself in in this emotion and and in this interactions and 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 when I started directing and I could see and I could just sense, I just keep doing it. I just went. I I always tell like I just went too deep and more deep and in theater than than maybe. Some people do because I just went to this uh, energy field and healing field in a different way. Tell us about um, about your work now and how you've you've really expanded being in theater to now you're you're the theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, my sister she's been she's a teacher and she's a great teacher. She just loves to teach she she loves when she she sees a kid that cannot read or can it's just struggling uh, she just she knows how to get there and 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 get them confidence and uh, to for make them to make them read it's a big deal for her and she really loves it and so we noticed we started like to combine uh play theater in in order like to build some scenarios, theme specific scenarios, like we like we started to build these scenarios for them to play. And we noticed the kids started like to learn faster, easier, and they had a lot of more fun. So so we started this, we just uh as a lab, we just started experiencing how playing was like the engine of of learning, and so this these kids were just like creating their own system of learning by joy and fun, and so we we set it up as a methodology in school, and and we base all all our philosophy in playing. Like uh, if we we teach well, we we teach regular subjects as math, phonics geography, science, language, and uh, we have mindfulness too. But every every subject is through play, like to playing. It's 
if, if we were seeing, um, I don't know, math, we see it as a store who, where the, where kids just go and buy things so they can sum and rest and di divide. So they're, they're actually learning how to sum, how to multiply by, by playing to the store. And so it's fun for them. They, they don't really recognize their, they're sort of in a school learning. They're just playing. Like there's, they're always playing something. So, and it seems to work. And we see that the experience, it's an immersive experience that, that works for them to be in a very relaxed and secure and confident place where they can develop themselves without having to be put under pressure to learn or know something in a way that we think is the correct way they they sort of just take their own way in that sense and after that we started to attend uh kids with a diagnosis like um asd is for you like autistic spectrum disorder or a adhd ADHD. yeah ADHD. or sensitivity um sensory sensitivity mm -hmm processing or 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 disorders and and what we do is just we put these kids in a regular group and we see that we can work in both directions like with them because in one way kids just are just learning to regulate to integrate and to socialize by imitation with the group but in the other way we are learning kids also to be inclusive and to recognize and and to appreciate how different we all are. And this creates like a, a whole perspective of inclusive community where the kids just, they don't scare about each other because a kid is screaming because their senses are so intense and they're not regulated. And now they know, like kids know they're screaming because they are, they have different processing information and they just sort of help them and, and they're very supportive with them. So we are really uh, seeing a new generation that is inclusive and, and supportive to the kids. So, and now this, we, we sort of always trying to go further. This year we are introducing sign language, sign language. Uh, and so we have the school in Spanish. They are taking English classes, and now they're they're going to be taking sign language as well. Mm -hmm. So though tri trilingual, it's going to be a trilingual school. And we are making grounding too. We're, like for this year, we're starting with grounding because we we notice kids um, well the impact of grounding and and the importance of being being grounded when you have this sensory alteration so we are just putting it as a, as a subject in school like everyday subject in school as mindfulness 